Hello and welcome to Sakura Angels. I am RMP792 and... Oh god, why the hell am I doing this? Some of you may remember Sakura Spirit. It was awful. It was by far the worst game I played last year and... Yeah, I really, really hate it. And this morning, I see that the same people who made it have released another game. Yeah, here we go again, people. Still, mustn't prejudge. Could be much, much, much better than last time. I just really, really doubt it. Oh, I really wish I was pouring out a glass of booze right now. I think I'm going to need vodka to get through this one. Alright, enough with the negativity, let's just get on with this. <clears throat> bumby, bumby, bum. <clears throat> Every night, I have the same dream. Every night, I'm always brought back to this place without fail. And then every morning, I'll wake up with no memory of this place at all and until the next time I fall asleep. Not a single night has went by without my consciousness being dragged into this abyss. This realm is devoid of light, so much so that I can't even see my hand in front of my face, no matter how desperately I wave it. The concept of sound is just as absent, my steps silent and my distressed cries swallowed by the bordering darkness as, quick, as quickly as they had left my mouth. I'm in a bleak, barren wasteland of nothingness. Spending any prolonged amount of time here begins to make me doubt even my own existence. Yet, despite feeling suffocated by a striking absence of anything, I, I know I'm not alone. Something... something is watching me. Stalking me from the shadows. I, I can't say for sure what it is, but but every once in a while I'll I'll catch sight of something from the corner of my view. A pair of burning bright eyes fixated purely on me. They hate me. Despise me. There's an overwhelming sense of animosity radiating from whoever they belong to. I I know they want nothing more than to lash out and attack me, but something is holding them back. A force that they truly despise. Invisible chains that bind and restrict them from the one thing that's on their mind. At first, when I began dreaming about this place, the eyes were distant like glimmering stars. With each passing night, the eyes seemed to inch ever closer and shine ever brighter. I think whatever force has been holding them from me is beginning to fade. What will happen when these... these eyes... reach me? I shudder to think. I know it's just a dream, so I shouldn't be afraid. But everything I experience here is so vivid. None of the usual murky haze that shrouds such dreamlike environments seems to exist here at all. I have perfect clarity. I can feel the stagnant, freezing air all around me. Enough to incite a shiver out of me every once in a while. Since I'm so used to this dream, I know how it'll end. I'll wade through the darkness for what seems like an eternity, never finding anything, until the morning finally comes and pulls me out of this nightmare. At least, that's how it usually ended. Something is different tonight. Those hateful, burning eyes that have always kept just out of sight before. I'm suddenly confronted by them. Never before have they been so close. Never before have I stared straight back into them. Their narrow, piercing gaze roots me to the spot and a shooting pain surges through me. I can't move. I can't breathe. And then, from out of the darkness, a crooked smile spreads, just as sinister as the eyes. So close. I can practically taste the freedom. It won't be long now. Enjoy the peace while you can, boy. For your days are numbered. And then 
Everything shall change. <laughs> oh, that was a bit sinister. Why do people always have massive bedrooms of visual novels? I've got to ask. Oh, oh my head is killing me. Oh, these morning migraines are the worst. Every morning without fail, I always wake up to a sensation not unlike my skull being pounded by a jackhammer. Thump. 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 It's almost like a... a heartbeat. Oh, I feel like my head's gonna split open. It's weird though, because even though the pain is so intense, it never lasts long. In the space it takes me to get up and head for school, the pain's usually reduced to just a dull throb at the back of my skull by then. So it isn't too much of a hassle in the grand scheme of things. But it certainly isn't a fun way to wake up. Uh, incidentally, if you're getting regular migraines like, you know, like that, seek medical advice. Just, just a tip. I just find it odd how consistent it seems to be. Anyway, enough pondering these weird mysteries. It's time to tackle the day. After a moment of wrestling with my blanket, I swing my legs around and drag myself out of bed. A quick look at my bedside clock tells me it's still early. Too early. If I had it my way, the world wouldn't start until at least a good way into the afternoon. But sadly, life just isn't that wonderful. Pulling back the curtains to let the light flood into my room, I express the urge to let out a hiss, almost blinding myself in the process. Too bright! The rest of my time getting ready, I spent fighting with my uniform, a tie becoming all the more problematic to put on when you're half asleep. Oh god, I think I've actually got my hand stuck in it! Almost choking myself to death in the most pathetic fight ever, I finished putting on the tie, the rest of my uniform complying peacefully with me. Unable to find a comb, I settled for just flattening my hair down with my hands. Blinking into the mirror, I'm left staring back at someone with messy black hair. Yeah, it's close enough. Somewhat dressed and somewhat ready, I stumble out of my room, my legs still not fully awake. Uneven steps carry me dangerously down the stairs and I soon emerge into the kitchen. I'm greeted by silence. The kitchen's empty. A familiar scene for me. My parents are what you might call workaholics. Basically they spend more time at their jobs than they ever do here. I never get to catch them during the evening while we're eating and then everyone's off to bed and the cycle repeats. Don't get me wrong, I understand they have to work in order to keep us living comfortably so I don't hate them for it. It just gets, I don't know, lonely? No. Oh, well. There's no use moping about it. It's been like this for years so I don't know why I'm getting all emotional about it now. The plus side of them not being around is that I quickly had to learn how to cook for myself. It's amazing how fast you can adapt to that sort of stuff when you're starving. I don't think I have enough time for anything fancy to eat for breakfast, so I'll just settle for toast. You can never go wrong with toast. Okay, you might be able to go wrong with toast. I have a sudden traumatic flashback to when the toaster erupted into flames. Ah, oh, what a day that was. But I've learned from my mistakes now. It won't happen a second third time. Having devoured the only slightly charred toast, I sling a bag over my shoulder before starting for the front door. I give the empty house one last look over before opening the front door. It's kind of depressing to have no one to say goodbye to. But then again, it has been the same every weekday morning since, well, since forever ago. The sun is shining high in a cloudless sky, birds are chirping overhead, and waves of students are passing by, happily chatting with one another as they all make their way to school. It's all so horrible. I'm not much of a morning person, so I can't even begin to fathom how everyone can be so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed right now. I mean, it's taking all of my willpower just to be able to put one foot in front of the other without just crumpling to the ground. I just have to hope that breakfast kicks in and gives me the energy I need before I'm forced to literally drag myself through the school gates. While keeping my head down and my eyes glued to the ground as I soldiered on, I suddenly notice that the vibrant atmosphere from before is gone. Silence has completely taken over. My steps are the only thing making any noise. The air is still. Huh? 
That's a bit strange. Bringing my head up, I met with an unsettling sight. The street is deserted. No students. No cars. Even the cheerful chirping of the birds is gone. What? I hurry forward, hoping to at least run into somebody. Anyone. Even the sun's once golden rays seem muted, the world tinged in dreary tones. But... There still isn't a cloud in the sky. Okay, this is definitely starting to freak me out. I just need to... A splitting pain shoots through my head, stopping me in my tracks. Like a searing poker being thrusted through my skull. A headache? Now? Nothing is making any sense. Desperately trying to keep myself upright, as I clutch my hand to my head, I stagger forwards. Unlike the headaches from before that gradually died down, this one only seems to be getting worse. Thump. 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 It won't stop at all. I'm brought to my knees. I can hardly think straight, my head threatening to explode at any moment. And then, through gritted teeth and a pained expression, I see it. Something that shouldn't exist. Yet, it clearly does. It's confirmed by my own terrified eyes. A monster. That's the only word that can come to my scrambled mind. A hulking, grotesque mass of flesh with, with gnarled fangs and red slitted eyes seething with hate. The closest thing I can relate it to would, would be a dog, but no dog I know of is three times the size of me. Its form practically eclipsing the sun. It snorts with flared nostrils, something like steam being exhaled out. Given its tense stance, the fact that it's blocking my way, I can only assume it's here for me. But, but why? What the hell is it? Where did it come from? Why does it want me? A million and one questions race through my head, but I doubt I'm going to get any answers from this... this... thing. There's only one thing I can do when presented with such odds. And that is... Ha <laughs> ha! Holy mother of crap! Let's face it, Sakura Spirit gave me one choice right at the end of the game. You've learned, guys! Congratulations! You might have actually made a video game this time! Okay then, so... Do we stand our ground or do we flee? One of those is the dumb option, one of those is the sensible option. But, not always. Here's the thing, you think the logical course to do is to flee. If we assume this thing acts in some way animalistic, then fleeing immediately makes you prey. And you do not want to be prey in that situation. Game of cat and mouse, the mouse does not win. So we stand our ground. Of course. I don't know what the hell this thing is, or why it suddenly appeared before me. But I'm not going to let it take me down without a fight. Ignoring the pain that threatens to consume my skull, I straighten myself up and stare right back into the hateful eyes of the beast. And then, tightening a fist, I lash out like lightning, my fist connecting with its head, and cleanly, with a solid impact. Take that, foul beast! Wham! Okay, no. Bad idea. That... that did nothing. In fact, it, um... Looks even angrier than it did before now. All I've managed to do is bruise my own fist. I just hope I haven't broken anything. I reel back from my brutal attack, giving the fist in question a good shake. Still stings. Ow. What do I do now? My blazing surprise attack was met with complete indifference, and now I think it's too late to run, as the creature is gearing itself up for a charge, its front leg digging into the ground. This might have been a mistake. I try to turn tail and begin running, but the beast kicks off to the ground, straight towards me. And there's nothing else I can do. I brace myself as best I can for the inevitable bone-shattering impact. Right before the beast can connect with me, and bring my life to a grisly end, a dazzling, radiant light floods my vision, engulfing both me and the monster. The beast stops in its tracks, a guttural cry escaping it before it vaporizes before my eyes. What the... What just happened? Sheesh, that was a close one. Are you alright? A cheerful voice chirps. A welcome sound after the terrors of that... That thing. Don't talk to him. We have to leave before... And then another voice that's... 
less cheerful. In fact, they sound angry more than anything. Yep, you can tell that this is made by the same people who made Sakura Spirit. <clears throat> the lights soon fade, revealing my saviors. Though, this is definitely the last thing I was expecting. Two girls, roughly my age, stand before me. I blink several more times, and I scrub up my eyes, hoping this might make a little more sense. This can't be real. I'm having more trouble believing these girls are actually standing before me than I did the monster. Worldly weapons and costumes take straight of a fantasy book. <laughs> it's a little bit much for my brain to attempt to process. What? What the heck was that? A shadow. The more cheerful of the two simply says that to me. It stands for relaxing some. Huh? Was that supposed to explain anything? I glance down at my feet where my own shadow stretches, but the girl bursts into a giggle. Oh, not your shadow, silly. That thing we just took care of, which you're welcome for, by the way, is what we call a shadow. The physical manifestation of all the hatred and negative emotions that might lurk in one's heart. Normally they're not so aggressive during the day, though. It was really out for you. We're usually pretty good at nabbing them before they get to you, but... <laughs> this one took us completely by surprise. I'm happy we got here in time. You're not hurt, are you? Uh, no, I'm fine, but I'm... Um, as if things weren't bad enough already, that we had to reveal ourselves to him, now you're just casually blabbing away things that no normal person should have a right to know. Have you lost your mind? I'm cut short by the more aggressive look into the pair, whose exasperation has grown darker, and darker as the cheerful one had spoken. Looking like she's unable to take it anymore, she exploded, causing both of us to jump. Oh, but he looks so confused! And now we've seen one of the shadows first time, don't you think that's just a little too late for us to quietly slip back into the shadows? Her eyes narrow into a frightened glare. It's clear she isn't happy. I don't, but I don't think she has anything to counter that. See? You worry too much. We'll only tell him what he needs to know, nothing more, nothing less. The upbeat girl brings her attention back to me, a sparkle in her eye. Right, so, uh, Kenta, where were we? Uh, we were, um, wait. How do you know my name? Huh? Oh! Whoops! <laughs> Jesus Christ, I've just noticed the length of the skirts. That's not a skirt, that's a belt. <clears throat> she puts her hand to her mouth as if to try and take back the words. The questions continue to pile up and I still haven't gotten any answers. You idiot! Whap. The serious one wraps her fist against the other's head, sticks her tongue out in a sort of tea, my bad, kind of way. So, so you guys know me? I've never seen them in my life. And given how they look, I definitely think I would have remembered them. Well, we don't know you personally, but we've been watching over you for a while now. You've become quite the point of interest recently, you know. Me? What the heck did I ever do to get so much attention? As far as I know, I'm just average student who lives an average life, doing average things. But after this, I, I guess I can't really call my life average anymore. Mm-hmm. Can't really go into details, because, you know, top secret and all, but uh, let's just say, it's not really in our best interest for you to fall into the wrong hands. I wouldn't believe how much effort we've been putting into keeping you safe, you know. Actually, I'm kind of relieved we finally get to meet, so you can finally appreciate all our hard work. She beams at me, leaning in perhaps just a little bit too close. I, um... She's throwing so much at me here, I can hardly think straight. Just, look. Who the heck are you guys? Hmm? She falls into deep thought, her nose scrunching up. I guess she's choosing her words carefully, as to avoid another brutal assault from her partner. Think of us as your guardian angels, okay? Saying that, she gives her bow a flourish and it shatters between her fingers. Sorry, she gives her bow a flourish and it shatters between her fingers. Moments later, the shattered pieces of the bow begin to gather behind her, the shards piecing back together rapidly, and they finally form a pair of wings in her back. The wings, while not strictly attached to her, at least seem to function as they sway in the breeze, give her a glimmer every now and then. Wait, are they literally angels? Hang on. Let me get this straight. Start from the beginning, 
That thing that attacked me, that... That monster. You call those shadows. Yep! And these shadows have supposedly been hunting me for a while now. Mm-hmm. Because apparently if they catch me, it'll be bad for unspecified reasons. Yep! Really bad. You guys, whoever you are, I have been combating for them from the shadows to keep me safe from harm. She nods enthusiastically. Looks like I've just about got a grip on what this whole thing is, even if it was a little sparse on the details. Knowing all this brings me to the conclusion that... Well, I think given the situation, we've kind of got to believe them. As crazy as all this sounds, I, I really can't deny the evidence before me. Well, it's either that or you flipped, mate. One is, a, you know, both are viable options. That monster was definitely real, and I have no reason to doubt these girls who destroyed the thing right before my eyes. Okay, so, um... What happens now? Hmm? Well, now that the shadows have gotten more aggressive, I... I really don't think we can go back to our old job of watching you from afar. We were lucky to just barely catch that thing now, after all. Somehow I don't like the sound of that, or what it might imply. At all. So, we'll be parting ways for now, but, um... Expect us to be keeping an extremely close eye on you from now on, okay? Bye bye for now! She gives me a wink and wave before taking off in the other direction. Her less infused partner simply turns her head from me with one last hmm before falling after her. I'm soon left completely alone within the street, where just moments ago my entire world had been spun on its head. I. Did all of that just happen? Oh jeez, all this slap will wait for later though. Right now, I have to focus on the bigger issue. Being late for school. I break into a sprint as I try and make up the lost time, all the while hoping that I'll never run into those two again. Somehow, I just barely make it to class. There was a photo finished through the door right as the bell rang, but I made it. Taking a moment to catch my breath, I drag myself over to my desk, the teacher arriving almost seconds after I collapse into the chair. Too close. None of the other students seem too bothered by my late entrance. Though, at this point, maybe that's exactly what they expect of me anyway. I have been pretty late at times, even missing the bell entirely some days. Mostly due to sleeping in. At least this time I had an actual reason for coming in so close. However, after what happened earlier, I think it's going to be impossible for me to focus on the lesson. I'm beginning to wonder if I'll ever get an explanation for what the heck that just happened. Possibly tall creatures, girls wielding magic weapons. Oh, no matter how I look at it, my brain refuses to accept it as reality. It goes against everything I know. I scrub through my hair, faint high still ringing out the back of my head. <sighs> Being lucky enough to have a seat situated by the window, I let my gaze wander out, my eyes vacant as I stare into the clear blue sky. The teacher's doing his usual morning speech. They're not talking about the upcoming approach for our school, but words just a dull mumble in my ears, my mind miles away. Those girls knew my name. I never know how far I delved back through my memories. It's pretty clear I've never seen them in my life. At least I don't think I've seen them before. I think hard. Maybe too hard. To the point my eyes begin to strain. Nope. Nothing. I can't recall a single thing that might shed light on this. Defeated for now. I turn back into the classroom while I'm still keeping my sights set on the sky. The teacher's voice becoming clear once more. Now, uh, I know it's a bit sudden, but as of today, we have two transfer students that will be joining our class. Transfer students? This time of the year? It's a bit late to be joining, don't you think? D is he honestly dumb enough not to realise who these two are going to be? Even the teacher sounds confused as he announces them. And not one, but two? I don't get the feeling there's something off about this. Almost if it's tied to what happened earlier. No kidding! Ha. No. No, couldn't be. I'd like you all to make them feel welcome as they transition in. Uh, what did you say your names were? I'm Sayaka. It's nice to meet you all. Once again, as with Sakura Spirit, if there's any names that are even vaguely Japanese, they're gonna get pronounced wrong. Almost certainly. I apologize for that. 
But I, yep, I'll get them as close as I can, but I'm not guaranteeing anything. I'm Sayaka. It's nice to meet you all. I hope we can all get along. I bolt upright in my seat, my head snapping towards the front of the classroom. That upbeat voice. Is it really? Sure enough, the two girls I never thought I'd see again have stood before me. In my school. In my classroom, no less. Wearing the school's official uniform. I'm sorry, that's not an official uniform. That's a corset. Where the hell is this school? And uh, why the hell are their school uniforms quite that kinky? Kidding, I've seen things in the window of Anne Summers that are less sexualized. Yeah. The cheerful one, uh, Sayaka, bows politely to the clash. Flashing music grins, her eyes pass over me. What? What is this? The other girl is less courteous, her arms crossed and her brow furrowed. She doesn't look pleased to be here. At all. The gaze passes over me too, but rather than a smile, she gives me a nasty glare. Is she blaming me for this? Sure feels like it. And the grumpy one beside me here is Hikari. Go on, say hi. Hey. D don't Sayaki gives her a playful push and she stumbles to the centre of the classroom. Everyone's eyes upon her. She looks like she's at a loss for words, her mouth opening and closing as her face gradually goes red. I guess she doesn't cope well under the spotlight. I'm... Yaki. Nice to meet you all. She trails off into a murmur before spinning on her heel and storming her way back to Sayaka, practically hiding behind her. See? That wasn't so hard, was it? Kari st simmers with silent rage, her hands balled at a tight fist, practically shaking. I'm sure if she wasn't in a classroom full of people, things might have gotten violent here. With her introductions over, the teacher motions for them to take their seats. Wait a second. I've only just realised where the only spare seats in the classroom are. One of them's right behind me, with a window view too, and the other's to my right. So that means they'll both be sitting next to me. Actually, that is pretty convenient. I can finally ask them just what the heck they think they're doing. Sayaka, with a spring in her step, waltzes towards the desk behind me. Hikari storms her way over, takes the other desk. I lean out from my desk to try and catch their attention, but I'm cut short by the teacher, who resumes whatever it was he was talking about before. Damn it. I don't want to get in trouble for talking during class. I'll have to wait until the break. That's two lessons away, though. Which is practically an eternity. I swing back around to the front of my desk. I can't do anything right now, so I'll just pay attention to the teacher and... Ah, no. I pay attention to anything when two magical girls are sitting near me. I want answers now. Drumming my fingers against the desk as the teacher continues to drone on, I try and think of a way around this. It's better I don't speak during class, so... Ah! Of course, it's so obvious. I dig into my school bag and pull out my notebook and pencil. I'll just pass them a note. Simple, silent. Bit of an immature means of communicating, I'll admit, but hey, I'm desperate here. I scribble down my message. What are you guys doing here? I may as well get straight to the point. Tear the page out, almost ripping it in half in the process. And one question is left. Who do I give this note to? Okay, well, it's a lot trickier to pass a note to the table behind you than it is to the one next to you, I would have thought. Just thinking about the mechanics of doing it. Yeah, it's got to be easier to pass one to the table beside you. But it's easier for the person behind you to notice what you're doing if you want to pass it back. I'm going to... Actually, looking at my timer, that's probably a pretty decent point to actually end this first video. So I will say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next part.